Today we're taking a look at the best-selling everyday carry gear on Amazon to see if it's any good. I built a full loadout with most of the stereotypical everyday carry gear items using the number one bestseller for each of their respective categories. So let's see if it's any good. A lot of this stuff is more on the budget end. Is it a good value? Is it worth the hype of the bestseller tag? Let's get into it, starting first with the wallet. This is the Buffway Slim Minimalist Wallet coming in at $14. Budget wallets in the past, Amazon EDC loadouts have been kind of hit or miss, but I have found a few gems, so I had high hopes for this. This is pretty substantial for a more minimalist card holder wallet. You have eight total card slots in here for a non-folding, you know, front pocket type of wallet. It's a little bit wider than most card holder wallets I've used in the past. It's three and an eighth inch wide, which is a little big and bulky compared to what I'm used to, but the plus side with having a slightly bigger wallet is you are able to keep, you know, proper bifold bills in the center compartment. A lot of the wallets I use, you have to trifold to fit them properly. For $14, the stitching and construction all seems really solid. You know, I gave it a pretty thorough once over when I first got it. I've been using it for a week or two now and uh, it's held up really well. They do say it's a leather wallet. They had a ton of variations, so maybe some of the other variations are leather. This could be some sort of low budget suede, but to me it definitely has a synthetic feel. Feel. It's more of a felt feel than a suede feel. It's RFID blocking as well, which is a nice touch. But other than the material, which does still feel decent, it just doesn't feel like leather like they advertised. For $14, I would definitely give this a pass. Moving on from there was handkerchiefs, and I was pleasantly surprised to see the number one best-selling handkerchief was the Dry Key Sweat Absorbing Microfiber Hankies. Uh, if you've been around the channel for a while, you've probably heard of these before. I bought them a couple years back and have talked about them off and on over the past couple of years. Uh, I really like these. They're a 10 inch by 10 inch handkerchief. It's more of a thick microfiber type of feel, so not a traditional handkerchief. Uh, these aren't going to be the best for nose blowing, which is my primary use case for the hankies that I carry. But for sweat and just wiping away sweat and using it for all the other handkerchief uses, this is a great option. I think I am in the minority for the nose blowing, so this would probably suit a lot of people really well. Uh, they're $15 for a five pack of them. I always take these out when I'm hiking and backpacking just to keep my face clear of sweat. Uh, they worked well. They're washer and dryer safe, which is always a nice touch with, you know, random fabrics and stuff like this. Uh, definitely a pass for me since it's already something I had and loved. Next up on the bestseller list was a key organizer. And they didn't quite have an exact category for that. It was under keychains. So this wasn't the number one pick, but this was the highest rated, you know, non just keychain to put on your keys. This was the highest rated organizer on the list. And this is just the standard key smart key organizer. This is another item. If you've been on the channel for a while, you probably know my thoughts on it already. I've tried a few different key smart key organizers in the past and am definitely not a fan. I think there are just a lot better options out there for similar prices. I tried the KeySmart Pro recently and that thing was just way overpriced for how it felt. You know, it was plastic and it was $50. Just felt like the worst value out of any key organizer I've tried. Uh, this one is definitely not quite as awful in my mind. It has an aluminum body, not like the cheap plastic that they used on the Pro. I think the big selling point for this compared to most of the other organizers is it will actually hold up to 14 keys because the way that's laid out, you're able to have keys on both sides. Not something I need. I carry three keys and then a little keychain multi-tool. So I have four in total. So this isn't really necessary for me because the downside to being able to hold more keys like that is just the functionality compared to similarly priced options here is not it. You don't have a really good and easy way to take the keys out and put them back in. And overall, I think the design, you know, aesthetically and functionally are just subpar. I would definitely recommend if you're in the market for a more budget option in this price range. The Orbit Key Active is excellent. I think it's one or two dollars more than this and it looks way nicer. It's a lot better functionally. Um, all in all, just far superior in just about every way in my eyes, except for, you know, the potential need if you're a janitor and are carrying a billion keys. Other than that, I'd probably pass on this, but it definitely is a lot better than the pro version at very least. 
Really quick, I wanna take a minute and introduce you to the sponsor of this week's video, and that is Delete Me. As you all know by now, I'm a huge advocate for online security, and I'm always on the hunt for any tools or services that can help protect our privacy. It's unfortunately easy for our addresses, phone numbers, and other personal info to end up in the hands of data brokers who are selling your information to the highest bidder. Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that helps remove you from these data broker sites, which in turn helps keep your sensitive information private. The service is super easy to use, it asks you a few questions up front so it can seek out and remove your information and essentially handles everything else for you. After the information is submitted, you get a report in your dashboard detailing all the information that was found and removed, and they repeat this process every three months to ensure any new leaks get resolved quickly for you. My report came back with 27 data brokers that had my personal info, and Delete Me was able to remove 35 different listings that were publicly sharing my information. The service has been really invaluable to me, getting all of this taken down truly brings me a lot of comfort and peace of mind. To date, Delete Me has successfully completed over 50 million opt-out requests. If you'd like help in taking control of your online privacy, head over to joindeleteme.com slash fen to sign up. You can also use code fen to receive 20% off any plan you choose. Huge thanks again to Delete Me for sponsoring this week's video. And let's get into the next item. Next category on the bestseller list was flashlights. They did have a few larger, more traditional type of flashlights. The first on the list that was kind of an EDC type of flashlight, at least in size, was the Streamlight MicroStream USB. Pretty similar to my Olay i3T with a few little nice upgrades. It weighs just over an ounce, about 34 grams. It's just under four inches long. So this is a really ideal size for me most of the time for EDC flashlights. It has two different brightness settings, one at 50 lumens, one at 250 lumens. It's an anodized aluminum body, definitely feels nice in the hand. There are a few things with this I really like about it and a few things I don't really like about it. Starting off with the main thing that was unique to this, I haven't seen anywhere else. It's a USB charging flashlight, which is great. Um, but you actually pull this and slide it off to be able to use the charging port. So you don't have a little rubber thing that covers it or anything like that. I think this sliding mechanism feels really great. It's super clever. It's one of the better designs for a rechargeable flashlight that I've seen. I really like that aspect of it. And on the note of charging as well, it's a 350 milliamp hour battery that is actually replaceable in here. That's another fault with a lot of rechargeable batteries. You can't always replace the battery. So the flashlight inherently becomes kind of disposable because batteries are. So for this, it's rechargeable, but you can swap out the battery really easily. Huge plus points for that. A couple of things I wasn't a big fan of, the recharging is really nice, but it uses micro USB. So swap that out to USB-C, probably easy enough. Everything else about the charging aspects is perfect. So that one swap would get some huge points in my book. The other issue I had was the tail switch. It's kind of difficult to press. I don't mean that in a way it was designed to prevent misfires. It just takes a little bit more effort to push that switch than I would really like it to. And the other point with the switch, for such a simple flashlight with only two modes, it's a little bit difficult to switch the modes. You're supposed to double click the switch, but because the switch isn't that great, it's kind of annoying to switch between the 50 and the 250 lumens. All in all though, it's a really solid flashlight. I think you'd probably be better off saving some money and getting an Olight i3T. I know that's me personally, and I know a ton of people don't like Olight for whatever reason. Uh, but I was really impressed with that charging design, but there are a couple flaws in here that would make me probably turn to something else in this more budget range. Next up for a pocket knife, it actually had recommended a little multi-tool pocket knife, and that is the favorite, you know, Victorinox Classic SD. I always thought these were called the Mini SD, but looking up notes for this, it's called the Classic SD. I've used one of these for years. I think they're great little pieces of kit. If you want something smaller that still has quite a bit of functionality, in addition to the regular blade, you also have a little nail file and flathead screwdriver, but you also have a pair of scissors. And then you also have a pair of tweezers, which can be really indispensable when you need them. Uh, you normally have a toothpick as well, but I actually swapped this out for a little ferro rod so you can you know, start a fire if you need to in an emergency setting. All in all, there are a few multi-tools in a $20 price point that are gonna be better than the Classic SD. They have a ton of colors. I have a Desert Warrior variant as well. Really solid pickup for that price range and would definitely recommend it. 
Next up on the list was headphones, and this was probably the only non-budget option that they had on the entire list. Otherwise, this could have been my you know, best Amazon EDC under 100 or under 150. You know, I've done a series of those videos. All this stuff would fit really well in there with the exception of the AirPods. But the AirPods Pro Gen 2 are definitely solid choices. These have been my main sort of daily driver headphones since they came out. They're really excellent headphones. I think the big draw for these overall others for me at least is the transparency mode found lots of other headphones that do noise canceling really well and i found lots of other headphones that have other features but the transparency mode in these is by far the best out of any headphones i have tried sound quality is really good with these i actually swapped out and put foam ear tips as well battery life has been solid they say it's 30 hours with the case and six hours without that's probably pretty accurate i haven't done any extensive testing with that uh, one thing that was new with the Gen 2 AirPods was the stem volume control. I had really high hopes for that because that was a big annoyance on the Gen 1s. Uh, it's not as easy as I hoped it would be, to be honest. It's better than nothing, but it definitely doesn't feel like fully baked as a feature quite yet. So we'll have to see in the future if they're able to get that, you know, fixed and taken care of. But um, $200 for these right now, so they're $50 off of the original retail price. Um, if you're in the market for some higher end earbuds, and especially if you have Apple products, I think this is a no brainer. But there are definitely some really solid options if you're looking to save some money. I recently had those new Soundcore headphones on that were $80. Those things were excellent. Always on the hunt for trying and testing new and other headphones as well. Let me know in the comments what you're using, if you like it or not. I'd love to hear about it. No everyday carry setup is complete in my eyes without a wristwatch. And the number one best selling watch on Amazon right now was the Casio F91W. Such a classic watch. It's $15. I already had this one in my collection because it's a must have if you're in any of these Casio watches like I am. It's definitely a small and simple watch. It only weighs 21 grams. Uh, the case size measures 35 millimeters by 38 millimeters, but it wears way smaller than that. That'd probably be my only downside for this if I'm nitpicking is I do wish it was a little bit of a bigger case, but there are plenty of other Casios that kind of fit the bill for that if that's what you're looking for. But if you want something really simple and dependable and lightweight, uh, the F91W is always a solid choice. Next category, we've got sunglasses and the number one choice were these sunglasses from a brand called Sungate. They had a ton of different variants for the lens and body color. Uh, they're $15. They're polarized. Uh, to be honest, I had very low expectations for these. They did not look very promising on the Amazon page, but I got them in and they are a little bit better than I expected. They definitely have a cheaper feel as one would expect getting $15 sunglasses, but they're really not as bad as you might think. Um, I don't really love these metal arms. I think that is the main culprit of what makes them seem cheaper because you have you know, the plastic like acetate type of body with the metal arms. It just makes it seem like glasses that you get at the dollar store. That being said though, these are decent. I think there are better options if you're getting into a 20 to $40 range that would probably be worth considering over these if I was buying more sunglasses right now. One big surprise though that I got with these, you do actually get with the package, you got a nice little microfiber case, you got a nice little microfiber cloth and something that really surprised me and seems totally unnecessary but was so welcomed I got this little keychain screwdriver for sunglasses and regular glasses, of course. The screwdriver seems decent quality as well, so that was a welcome surprise. I think they're fine for $15, but I would probably recommend you know, bumping up to a $20 to $40 range and getting something that is going to feel several times better and probably look a little bit better as well. That's going to wrap it up for the loadout, though. All in all, I think this was a pretty solid loadout, all things considered. You know, I would make a couple of swaps like I talked about as we went through everything. The total price, with the exception of the AirPods, was only $124. I think this is a really compelling, you know, budget everyday carry loadout. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I know I normally do the, you know, kind of price constraints. I thought focusing on the best sellers would be a lot of fun. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you want to see any other video ideas in the future, uh, let me know down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.